Hello, I'm Ben Saltzman, and in this video, we get to explore The Matrix, the movie, and the characters in the movie, and what Enneagram personality type are they, and why. You'll notice our Matrix background here, and the basic assumption of The Matrix, we we'll use it as an analogy for your type, is that when you're wrapped up in your type, you're living in a false world. And we go deep into that in another video. You can click the link here and go explore that other video where we really share how does your type got you living in a world that you can't see or taste or touch or smell? A prison for your mind. But in this video, let's get into the different types of the characters in The Matrix. First, we're going to start off with Neo. And at the beginning of this movie, we see him in kind of conflict with his boss. You'll remember that Neo is a hacker and he, his day job is he goes to work for what looks like a very large company with very little care for its employees. And he's kind of belligerent. He's kind of not wanting to do what that guy wants him to do. He's kind of bucking up against authority, which reminds me of the Enneagram Type 6. The sixes are kind of anti-authoritarian. They often, especially the version that we call the counterphobic six, they're kind of, they don't trust authority figures. They want to trust authority figures. There's inner, inner angst around their own authority. Do I have authority? Do I not have authority? You know, there's, there's kind of a flip floppy back and forth quality to the type sixes. And when he's in there with his boss, and the boss is telling him he's coming in late because he's up late at night hacking and trying to break into all kinds of places where he's not supposed to go. Um, so, the, you know, the boss is giving him a hard time and he's covertly belligerent is the best term that I could use for it. He felt like a six to me in that part of the movie. But as the movie goes along, we, we get a, a deeper and a deeper view of him. And he, there's this inner doubt that he's facing where Morpheus, the, the guide, is telling him, you're the one. And Neo, N-E-O, shuffle those uh, letters around a little bit and you've got one. So he, he actually ends up being the one. But... He doesn't believe it. He has a lot of trouble believing it. There's a little bit of, you know, first when things are going bad, why is this happening to me? That's one of his ongoing questions. And then as things go better and better, and Morpheus is saying, no, you're the savior. You can do this. You're the one. And he just doesn't buy it. He doesn't believe it inside. There's a self-lack. There's a deficiency inside of him. And that really pulls me towards type nine. Inside for the nines, there's an internal questioning. Do I matter? Am I enough? Am I invisible? What's wrong with me? When do I get to have my turn? It's like the opposite of claiming I'm the one. I'm the one that can help. I'm the one that can make it a difference. I've got skills that I can deliver to the world. It's like the inside the nine. Proclaiming that boldly would be dangerous. Not okay. Mm -mm. So we add another layer on this and we kind of go into the metaphysics of it all. Neo's journey, this is the hero's journey. He, he gets a calling, he gets pulled towards something. He moves towards that thing and he has unseen friends that come in to support him. He's got Morpheus and Trinity and a whole band of uh, misfits who are supporting him on the journey and there's challenges. He's facing his own inner demons and he's facing other people. And this, this is an archetypal journey where you kind of leave home and discover yourself along the way. And like Jesus, at the end, he has to die to himself before he can really find his authenticity and his divinity. 
And classically, Jesus is a type nine. He's got the, the softness and the compassion of the nine. Yeah, the nines are at the top of the Enneagram here. Some people could say this is the original sin. It's the way that we all go to sleep. The nines go to sleep to themselves. Uh, and they're in this slumber until they do wake up. And Neo literally has to die. Bullets move into his matrix body, inside the matrix. And he, he dies before... He wakes up and becomes the one. So that's Neo. Now let's go over to Morpheus, the, the guide, the strength. Morpheus's conviction is absolute. When everybody else is, is questioning, is Neo the one, or is there even such a thing as the one, Morpheus knows. And he knows that he knows. And I associate this level of force and conviction with the Enneagram Type 8. Sometimes you see it in evolved Type 6s, but Morpheus feels a little bit more like an Enneagram Type 8 to me. There's strength underneath there. There's conviction underneath there. When everybody else is saying, we don't even know if there is a one. And we don't even know if there is a one, what he can do. And Morpheus is the one that says, you're it. I know it. And his body, when he's, when he's saying it, I know it, it's like a full body knowing the way eights relate to their bodies. It gives them a lot of information around what's true, what's not true. Is this person telling the truth? Am I knowing the truth? Am I not knowing the truth? Like eights, they think they have cornered the market on the truth. And a lot of the times, because their bodies are so attuned to what's real, what's authentic, what's true, they've got a pretty good feel for it. They're pretty connected to it. So Morpheus, type eight, you know, Neo, Neo asks him a question halfway through. You mean to tell me I can stop bullets? And Morpheus, when it's time, you won't have to. All I'm offering you is the truth. That's some stuff there. Morpheus is claiming it. It's like, I know, and I'm going to know for you. This is a superpower of the type eight, really. I'm going to know for you how good you are until you can know for you how good you are. Like, I see it in you before you can see it in you. I love this attribute of the Enneagram Type 8. That they can see that thing for you and know it for you and have conviction for you until you live into it. So Morpheus, a beautiful guide for Neo along the journey, just holding resolute. And I've seen eights do this before in corporations and organizations and churches. Like, I've been around a, a number of eights that can see possibility in groups and organizations and in individuals and really um, push for that vision. Hold that, think Martin Luther King. Hold that vision of possibility until the world catches up. So let's go over to the Oracle. Now, at first there's this omniscience this all-knowing, you know, when we think about the archetypal oracle in, in Greek mythic philosophy, there's, the oracle is the, the intelligence that taps into the all, like they know everything. And we associate that with Enneagram type five. Like the holy quality for type five, each of the nine types has a, a quality, an essence quality, a holy quality. For the five, it, it's omniscience. It's this instant access to all knowledge across time, across space, instantaneously. That's omniscience. That's the oracle. And, you know, when 
Neo is finally taken to the Oracle, so the Oracle's gonna meet him. One of his questions is, so what, the Oracle knows everything? And Morpheus, our type eight, she would say she knows enough. And then we go in to meet the Oracle, and it's not kind of a heady type five, this is a type two here. This is, she's got an apron on. She's caring towards him. She's warm. This is a, she's an Afro-American woman who's like happy to see him and has got love in her eyes and welcomes him in. And they start talking about what's going on. And she, and she has these great lines in there. She's like, oh, well, let me take a look at you. You know, stick out your tongue, say, ah, oh, ah. <laughs> she's like checking him out like he's a horse or something at one point. Like, you know, she's, she's, she's friendly. She's nice. She's, she cares about him in a way that you just don't see fives have that much access to heart space usually until they've done quite a bit of work. So the Oracle is, you know, kind of checking him out and she says, ah, it seems like you're waiting for something, kid. He's like, oh, I'm not the one. And she's, yeah, feels like you're waiting for something. And here's a little foreshadowing. Feels like you're waiting for something. Maybe your next lifetime. So smart, but tuned in on the emotional level. Another line that the Oracle delivers to him is, I can see why she likes you. And she's talking about Trinity, who has fallen in love with Neo. And the Oracle told her a while ago, you're gonna fall in love with the one. Like he's gonna show up. You're gonna fall in love with him. The Oracle knows the emotional realm. So she says to Neo, oh, I can see why you like why she likes you. And he's, huh, who? And then she says, not too bright though. Meaning like Neo doesn't really, she hasn't caught on that Trinity is deeply in love with him. So he's not too bright, but you know, he's a lovable guy. He's the one, he doesn't know it. And he's lovable. So, so we've got the Oracle, who's got the, you know, the kind of the type five knowledge and access to all, but really when we meet her, she just feels very two-ish to me, very archetypal mother, helper, supporter. You know, I hate giving good people bad news is one of her lines. Like this, this is a woman who leads with her heart and, and, and wants the best for Neo. So, so there's some of your uh, characters. And again, we'll put a, a link around this video where you can click the link and you can go check out our other video on The Matrix, where we really start to explore how do we go to sleep to ourselves? How is your particular type, your matrix, your Enneagram type, how has it got you going to sleep to reality? What are the hidden fears that are in there? We'll give you some examples of how your type is like the matrix for you personally. What are those hidden fears? What are those um, blinders that you have on? So you can't see reality. You know, one of my favorite sayings, we don't see reality as it is, we see reality as we are. So what is, what is the specific skew on reality that you've got going because of your type? So when you click the link, you'll go over, you can see that video. We'll also describe to you our matrix program. We have a specific program that takes you deep into the exploration and transformation of your Enneagram type of your specific matrix. So if you wanna kind of jump into doing that deeper level work, this is a good springboard for you. 
So go ahead and click the link. I'll see you over at the other video. I'm Ben Saltzman, and this has been our wrap on the matrix and the types inside the matrix, what Enneagram type they are.